கர்ம சந்யாச யோகா த யோகா ஆஃப் ஆக்ஷன் அண்ட் ரெனன்சியேஷன் ஆஃப் ஆக்ஷன் ஹியர் இஸ் தி எசென்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி வேர்ஸ் இஸ் எயிட் அண்ட் நைன் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் அண்ட் காமெண்ட்ரி பை மகர்ஷி ஜி நைவ கிஞ்சித் கரோ மீதி யுக்தோ மன்யேத தத்வவித் பசியன் சுருண்வன் ஸ்பிருசன் ஜிக்ரன்னஸ்னன் கச்சன் ஸ்வபன் ஸ்வசன் நெக்ஸ்ட் பிரலபன் விஸ்ருஜன் குருஹ்ன முன்னிஷ நிமிஷன் அபி இந்திரியாணீந்திர யாத்தேஷு வர்தந்த இது தாரையன் அண்ட் ஹியர் இஸ் தி ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் தீஸ் டூ வர்சஸ் ஒன் who is in union with the divine and who knows the truth will maintain i do not act at all in seeing hearing touching smelling eating walking sleeping breathing speaking letting go seizing and even in opening and closing the eyes he holds simply that the senses act among the objects of sense there are five important phrases here one who is in union with the divine second who knows the truth will maintain third i do not act at all and the fourth in seeing hearing touching smelling eating walking sleeping breathing speaking letting go seizing and even in opening and closing the eyes and number 5 is he holds simply that the senses act among the objects of sense so here in the last verse we have seen that when one has experienced the self 
as separate from the senses and their activity which happens in cosmic consciousness then he sees within himself the state of unbounded being on one side and involvement in the world of forms and phenomena on the other side besides he sees very clearly that every living being is supported by that being which is his own self so with this understanding that he is the self of all beings then he is not involved even while he acts so here once the man is established in this state he naturally enjoys such gratefulness of being that he doesn't feel he is out of it so here the action does not involve coming out of the self for such an individual and because of this he is not involved even while he acts he further feels as though everything were going by itself now coming into the verses 8 and 9 let us look at the first phrase one who is in union with the divine the divine nature or this consciousness is completely separate from the field of activity and when this has been realized the self is experienced as independent of the activity so in this experience of the self being independent of activity brings a completely different reality in the daily life and now if we take the next phrase and who knows the truth will maintain so again one who is in union with the divine and who knows the truth so this knower of the truth knows that life has two aspects relative and absolute further the field of relative life is governed by the three gunas here he knows through understanding and experience that the self is separate from the field of activity now if we go into the third phrase i do not act at all one who is in union with the divine and who knows the truth will maintain i do not act at all here the basic knowledge about the self and the nature of activity creates a situation in the mind where the self realized man is automatically established in the truth of the expression and what is this truth i do not act at all so here it's important to understand that one does not hold on to this thought artificially but the very structure of his mind is based on this natural non attachment so such a self realized person lives this state to him non attachment is a living reality in daily life he acts and experiences making use of his senses but within himself he remains as the being so in essence he lives fullness of being while fully engaged in the field of senses now we come to the next phrase where bhagwan says the senses act among the objects of sense and let us see how this happens here the self realized lives two fold he is living the stability of changeless being which constitutes the inner core of his life and on the periphery is found the activity of the sensory level and what is this activity of the sensory level 
the senses are engaged in the experience of their objects. So here the senses continue to act among the objects of sense but he remains as the being. And what are the various activities of this senses? Seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, walking, sleeping, breathing, speaking, letting go, seizing and even opening and closing the eyes. Because we understand that this, there is the senses and there is the objects of the sense with all these sensory activities. So again, one who is in union with the divine and who knows the truth will maintain, I do not act at all. He holds simply that the senses act among the objects of sense. Now, let us try to understand this further. What we have seen is that through the practice of transcendental meditation, cosmic consciousness has been gained and the individual ego now has expanded to cosmic status. And here the mind automatically functions from the level of its full potentiality and the senses having reached their maximum development function at their highest capacity. So again, mind is functioning at the level of full potentiality and the senses are functioning at their highest capacity. Listen carefully. However, the, the objects of the sense, however, remain in their unchanged state. So again, the senses are functioning at their highest capacity, but the objects of the sense remain in their unchanged state. That is why the senses acting from their raised level experience objects more completely. And this results in a greater appreciation of the objects and provides experience of greater happiness on the sensory level. So here what you are seeing is a situation in which the objects of the sense are enjoyed more thoroughly than before by the highly developed senses but still the impressions of sensory experience fail to capture the mind. And why is this happening? Because being is more fully grounded in the very nature of the mind. So this enlightened man whose being is more fully grounded in the very nature of the mind naturally remains in a state where the senses continue to experience their objects while he remains free. So here again it's important to understand that this is a comparative statement and it should not be misunderstood that an enlightened person becomes incapable of experience. It only means that that before enlightenment experience in the world used to overshadow his being and now his being shines forth through all the experience. Again before enlightenment if he saw a flower the flower overwhelmed the mind so completely that only the flower remained and the experiencer was lost in the experience. So again, the experiencer was lost in the experience of the flower and it looked as though he was the subject was annihilated by the object. So before enlightenment, when one's life was all material life, and the material objects predominated. Matter alone is found and the values of the spirit and soul are overshadowed. Then the experiencer 
was lost in the experience of the object alone but what happens after enlightenment the flower is still seen but the experience of the flower does not overshadow the being and why is this so because being has been realized as separate from the field of activity and thus the subject and the object are both separately maintained and both are alive in their fullness so here the flower fails to overshadow the being and at the same time the light of being does not diminish the validity of the flower so again both are alive in their fullness in the enlightened individuals awareness further through the light of being the flower is appreciated infinitely more and also this brings about the integration of the spirit and matter and this is the glory of transcendental meditation because this repeated transcendence brings enlightenment that integrates all the material values of life with the divine now let me read these two verses again one who is in union with the divine and who knows the truth will maintain i do not act at all in seeing hearing touching smelling eating walking sleeping breathing speaking letting go seizing and even in opening and closing the eyes he holds simply that the senses act among the objects of sense so here ends the essence of the verses 8 and 9 translation and commentary by marshi ji chapter 5 karma sanyasa yoga the yoga of action and renunciation of action now i will just add a few sentences of my own experience when the cosmic consciousness within me was completely established and the self was so separate from the non self there was this heightened experience of all the physiological functions and the sensory activities something that was not there in my awareness was so fully aware from the gross to the subtle i remained as the self and could see these very subtlest activities of even blinking breathing in a subtle way my heart beat the hair moving on the top of my head the very subtle experiences on the sensory level in terms of touch hearing vision taste and smell which were so subtle and subtle and they were so separate from the self it truly felt that the self and this non self were so separate but integrated in some way and it seemed to me that the self was constantly watching witnessing and aware of the this the subtlest activities within myself and i was firmly and completely established in the self and i would only say i am the self and this is the non self and i am immortal and this is something that is going to be changing and perishing the gunas are playing their role the senses are acting among the objects of sense but i am separate and i am the being alone this was a completely different state of existence 
and this state for me lasted for about 2 years before it all came together in god consciousness so the whole beauty of this knowledge and the experience is that it is a living reality and it gives hope to every seeker that one can be enlightened all i can say is jay gurudev so we'll continue tomorrow jay gurudev loka samasta sukhino bhavantu ಭೋಕ್ತ